the 21 day challenge to self-love. That's the topic we're going to cover here today on Relationship Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, as you guys know, I'm always talking about, I'm always reading, I'm listening to uh, different people's perspectives on things. Uh, because as you guys know, I've always talked about nobody has all the answers. Um, we're all walking this journey. We have different perspectives. That's why you guys know my motto is it ain't right, it ain't wrong is my opinion because we got our opinions. But we're taking in based on experience, based on things we've read, things we've, and we come up with our own views of the world. And that's again why my, my motto is what it is. But what I'm getting to here is I'm in the process of reading a book. And it's called The 21 Day Challenge by Ingrid Lindberg, L-I-N-D-B-E-R-G. And it's, when I saw the title, it immediately hit me. It was like, oh, man, that'd be awesome to create a challenge to get people to that to that stage where they would actually have self-love. And the reason the 21 days hit me instantly when I saw the title is because they tell you most habits will be made within a 21 day period. In other words, if you do anything for 21 days consecutively, it will become a new habit. And so I was like, that's cool because if we do something for 21 days, dealing with the self-love, we can take a person from maybe not having it today or it maybe it's low or it could even have some, but we want to make, we want to strengthen it. If we did something for 21 days, we can make that happen. But you guys also know I don't impact We'll change it immediately. But let's do the 21 day challenge. And hopefully along that process, there'll be some impact and it won't take the 21 days. But worst case scenario, if we go through all this in 21 days, we'll be good. So what I did is, as you guys know, I'm always take my perspectives because most of the time I don't necessarily see things the way uh, a lot of people teach and share. And um, so I but I am willing to learn and implement some of the things that they do share that I can agree with. And then I'm always going to have my own perspective, as you should also. This is never about finding someone and living your life according to what them, because you're not trying to duplicate anyone and become a copy. This is about taking what works for you and use it. So anyway, let's get to the conversation here. Two things I'm going to ask for you in the process of us going through this 21 day challenge is first, I'm going to tell you, grab your journal. And if you've never journaled before, now is a great time. The reason that I want to put that at the top of the list is because what I want you to do is I want you to recognize where you are. And at the end of this 21 days, where you're going to be and you're going to see an incredible growth. And, um, and, and we probably won't even have the self-love conversation anymore, at least from your perspective. You'll be able to go help other people go through this and hopefully even take them through the 21-day challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do the first seven days. That's right. I'm only covering the first seven because I'm making sure you come back next week to hear the next seven. And so anyway, we're going to do this to the 21 days. So anyway, I told you the two things I want you to do. Number one is I want you to grab your journal. I want, to, I want you to go through the process. I mean, just grab a piece of paper. If you don't have a journal, you can start from anywhere, but don't use that as an excuse. Uh, type it on your, uh, your phone and your little notepad or whatever, but let's do this. And if you do it on the notepad on your phone, Make sure you copy it and paste it somewhere else. Folks, I'd have lost so many things on those notepads where I accidentally pushed the wrong button and it was gone. And it's like, now maybe you guys can share with me. Maybe there's a way to get it back. But it's like, I'm like, oh man, the note's gone. And anyway, so, and then the second thing I'm gonna ask for you to do, the journal, and then the Lisa Nichols exercise, which I shared with you guys in the past. And it's basically, she says do it for 30 days, but let's at least do it through this 21 day process. And that means every night, before you go to bed, there's three statements you have to say and you have to put an ending, seven different endings at the end of each statement. And this is an example. The first one's going to be you're going to state your name and you say, I am proud of you and fill in the blanks. Now, you're going to do this looking in the mirror. OK, so in other words, Ron Myers, I am proud of you 
for whatever. And I got to put seven endings. Now, they don't have to be totally seven different. It might be the same one seven different times. But go through the exercise and actually state your name each time. This is reprogramming, as you guys know I've talked about before. The reason you believe the things that you believe now is because of programming. We're getting ready to change that programming, and that's really the whole concept here. So we're going to do this repetition until we reprogram. So the first statement is, Ron Myers, I am proud of you for, and I got to put seven endings and say it seven to, Again, Ron Myers, I'm proud of you for. Ron Myers, I'm proud of you for. Ron Myers, I'm proud. This is not Ron Myers, I'm proud of you for this, for that. No. We're having a conversation with the person in the mirror because that's the person we're getting ready to to get some self-love in here. All right. So anyway, the second statement is going to be, again, stating your name. And then you say, I forgive you for. And put seven endings. I forgive you for. That's the second one. And then the third one is, I commit to you that whatever it is that we're going to do. We're, I commit to you that we're going to finish this 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 21 day program, whatever it is. But make sure you do the seven. So those those three again. Number one is state your name. I am proud of you for. Number two is I forgive you for, and then number three is I commit to you that those three. So those two you got to add this to this 21 day, and that's why I told you I take from all the different things that I love and I put this stuff together because it all worked because that's not what was talked about in the book. That's why I told you. See, the stuff that you cuz some people I know you try to outsmart me be like, "I'll just go get the book." I guarantee you're not going to hear the stuff that I'm sharing and the stuff that I'm teaching by reading anyone's book. And and a lot of it is because I do have different ways that I see the world because of my experience, because over 30 years of, of being into self-development and because I'm always adding, just like in this book, I'm always adding to my thought process. So, but anyway, so again, no two people should ever think alike. So you're not going to ever be able to read anyone's book and get the information that I'm going to give. And that's a good thing. OK, <laughs> so and that's not saying you can't learn from other people. I'm just saying we're going to see things differently. And that's a good thing. OK, so let's talk about um, day one. Day one, what I want you to do is I want you to actually do like the number one example. Day one, we're going to talk about where are you now? And this is all because, again, we're talking about self-love. Where are you now? And the questions I'm going to tell you to use are the three questions that I've also learned. And this came from um, oh, Gary Smalley. And he talked about, but he was talking about in relationship perspective. But to me, you know, if we get the relationship with ourselves, all the other relationships work. So anyway, I'm saying this technique works in the relationship with yourself. And the three questions that you're going to ask yourself is, and this is what you're going to do on day one. On a scale of one to ten, where are you now on the self-love scale? And folks, this is for you. This is journaling. This is for you. Be honest with yourself. This is about we're moving. We're going, we, we get ready to accelerate this thing and we're going to love us some love when we get through. But anyway, again, number one, day one. We're going to ask that question on a scale of 1 to 10, where do we want to be? Now, we know the answer is going to be 10. Do not sell yourself short. Now, I know some of us go, well, at least a 9. Okay, if you want to go there, but let's push for the 9 or 10. We're going to do the 10, right? Okay, the second question is going to be, now, on a scale of 1 to 10, because the first one was where do we want to be? Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, which is the second question, where are we right now? which to me is kind of what, what, what the question is we're saying day one. It says, where are you now? To me, that's what we're asking. On a scale of one to 10, where are we right now? And be honest with yourself. And then the third question is going to be, so what do we do today, tomorrow, over the next week, two weeks, month, or whatever, in order to help ourselves get closer to that 10? See, again, these three things I'm just sharing with you just now, that's not in the book. So I'm telling you now, you can try the shortcut if you want to. You ain't going to learn the stuff that I'm sharing. So, but anyway, because you can tell, I'm taking from different people. That came from Gary Smalley, those three questions. But I know how you can put it in this particular day one 
and make it work for you. So that's going to be your day one exercise is you have to actually go through and be honest with yourself and spend. And, and, and the reason I'm saying, because you'll look at these and as I'm going through them and you'll think, well, I can do all seven of those in one day. And he talking about this is seven days. Well, because I want you to use that day to recognize. And that's why I'm saying take it as a day. So like we said on a scale of one to ten. I want you to spend that, that whole day going through as you start to see things going on in your life on your day. What is it that I can do that I maybe something that I just did that I don't agree with because we listen to that thought process also and you go, ooh, man. OK, I need to change that because that's making me feel bad about myself or that's not working for me or whatever. But the bottom line is. We're going to spend the whole day really focusing on these thoughts, these things that are popping in our head. And is that moving us towards the 10? You guys follow me? What can we do to get to that 10? And we got to recognize our thoughts that are going on during the day. And folks, I'll tell you, you guys know I've talked about doing an exercise where I tell people you can do it probably in one of probably within 30 seconds for most people is listen to the thoughts are they negative they're positive get a point if it's negative get a uh, one point if the, if the thought is positive most people the thoughts are going to go negative 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 because remember we have about seventy thousand thoughts a day about 90 95 percent of them i've heard are about the same conversations and they're usually almost all negative so the key is that's why i said for most people you could do this probably in about 10 20 seconds you'll be like ooh, ooh negative 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 and you'll see that your thought process is negative. So the ideal here is day one, we want to really focus on those and catch those. Yes, it is going to be some work. I know some of you like, <sighs> probably feel overwhelmed just that fast. We got to do this. We're moving from where we are to we're going to move. Because again, as you guys know, I'm saying if we get you together, your relationships become a lot simpler. Attracting the right person becomes a lot simpler. Why? Because you're not looking for anyone to fill any void for you. This, what we're getting ready to do, is going to make sure that we move you and get you taken care of. Remember, that's my whole concept. Get you taken care of. <sighs> the rest of his relationship stuff, that, that becomes a breeze. Okay, so day two. Why is it so difficult to say, I love you to yourself? Now, we know where most of that's coming from is because society tells you that to love you some you is arrogant. It's a bad thing. You're putting yourself on a pedestal. You need to pull yourself off. Bad, bad information. It's not arrogance. I am the person that runs with me all day, every single day. I am the only person that's going to be in my life from the day I'm born. I mean, every moment that's going to be with me from the day I, I was born until the day I leave here. Only one person. And this is not a spiritual conversation. So let, let's not take it there because I know some people it should be like, well, this, that's not what I'm talking about. That's a whole different conversation. I'm saying from a physical perspective, you are the only person. That is going to be with you 24-7 from the day you born to the day you leave. That person better be your best friend, better be the person that loves you the most, better be the person that's looking out for you. Because I don't care how much everyone else loves you and cares for you, nobody is going to be with you that much. And so you got to make sure you take care of you. So anyway, um, day three. And so day two, we're going to spend that time, okay, when we're talking that, that self-conversation, because remember, we're, we're journaling this whole time. So day two, we're going to focus on that question. OK, why is it so hard? So when you catch yourself saying these things that maybe it's negative, you go, where did that come from? Do I believe that? Why do I believe that? Because you'll start to recognize a pattern. This is why it's been so hard for you to love yourself. Because of these thoughts, these conversations that are coming up. Maybe somebody said something at work or someone said something and instantly you took it personal. And you start to go, oh, that's why it's so hard for me to love me. Because I'm taking what they said personal and making it me myself believe that's who I am. That's their perception. You guys have heard the saying, what you think about me is none of my business. You got it. 
again, I'm not a person that says you get to a point where you don't care what other people think because I think in order to get to that point, one, you have to be, you would have to be arrogant. And uh, two, you stop being a human being. We all care. What I tell people is you got to get to a point where you weigh what people think. In other words, you say stuff and I weigh it. On, is it designed to help me or are you trying to hurt me? If it's here to help me, I might not even like the way it presented, but I'm going to take the information and run with it. If it's designed to hurt me, I'm going to let it slide down my back. That's when that concept of not caring what other people think, I'm with you. If it's designed to hurt you, let that flow. Let that go. <laughs> okay. And okay, now day three, we want to talk about unraveling the misconceptions about self-love. Now for me, uh, you guys know I, I share what love is. Love is accepting someone or something exactly the way it is. It doesn't need to change in order for you to accept it. I didn't say agree. I said accept. You have to be able to accept that person in the mirror and love that person and that's why I said to me, that is love. It's not a, you know, some people talk about conditional, unconditional love. To me, there is no such thing as conditional love. If there's conditions, it's not love. It's that simple. Because you're basically saying someone has to do things according to your agenda in order to receive your love. That ain't love. You can keep that. Love is bad. I accept you. Don't mean I'm going to deal with you because remember I said accepting and agreeing are two different things. I can accept you as you are. This is your life, your journey. I accept you. Now, I don't agree with what you do, so we ain't hanging out. So, but in this case, because we're talking about self-love, you got to hang out with you, so you better get over it. But the bottom line is, that's why I said the love part is accepting you as you are. So again, so day three, we're going to spend most of that not most of spend the entire day when you have those conversation things about yourself are you accepting you are you okay i don't care what's going on if you even look in and say my weight that's not loving you that's not accepting you i love the person i see in the mirror now if i need to get in better shape and you guys have heard me say that before if you need to get in better shape for health purposes that's a total different conversation but that has nothing to do with loving and accepting the person I see. So we're going to spend day three just going through that all day long. But that's going to be the focus. And that's why I said, folks, you can really look at this and say each one of these, you could probably do all seven and be like, well, I'm finished. For no, I want you to take each day and totally focus that day on this particular exercise, fine tuning it, listening to the conversations, making the adjustments, and you're going to see some changes. Day four. Visual, visualization. Uh, we know we talk about you got to see it in order for it to become a reality. But in this case, understand visualization also has to do with emotions. Remember, as I talked about it and I've shared with you guys about the steps, you have thoughts. Then those thoughts turn into stories. Those stories create emotions and then your actions follow. So if we know emotions is the thing that we're trying to change, which is what we're talking about here day four with the visualization, we're going to try to change the emotions, the way we see ourselves. That's the emotional part. How do we do that? Back to step three. You guys know I've talked about before. You can go forward. You can go backwards. We know if it's thoughts, go to stories. Stories go to emotions. Emotions go to e actions. If we go emotions is what I want to change, which is number three. What's number two so I can figure out how I got to my emotions? It's the stories. But in this case, we're talking about the stories that we're right. We're going to visualize the story in a way that we want it to be and we're going to visualize all day yeah all day when you get that opportunity you may be at work so <laughs> it may take a little a little extra effort but i want you to visualize especially when you say something negative about yourself visualize the emotion you want to change because what you just said maybe made you feel negative in a negative way about yourself visualize a different way of saying that because again, we're rewriting stories, okay? And visualize it to the point where I can look in the mirror and go, I love you, I love you, okay? We're gonna keep writing that story until it becomes reality. Day five, commit to it. Commit to self-love. I don't care what everybody else is saying, how people try to tell you it's arrogant, none of that, we ain't listening. We about to get us together the world has told us since we were little 
that, that that's not a good way to be. I'm telling you, it is. Let's take care of us. So day five is totally going to be focused on committing to this self-love, recognizing, really, like I said, spending your day recognizing. How can I how, how can I change the way I see myself and commit to that, that I love you? I love you. Just kind of what I was just saying. I love you. No matter what happens, back to committing to I love you just as you are. Uh, day six, we're going to talk about self-care. Do something for yourself. This is not, we need to start, we beat ourselves up. Stuff that we would never say and do to friends and family and even strangers. But we do to ourselves. We are our biggest critics, as you guys know. Um, and so today we're going to spend the whole day on self-care. You know what I mean? And it's like, find something you can do for yourself. Go spend some time at a park. Go. I mean, this is something, I mean, you guys know, I've talked about, um, what Tony Robbins teaches about our power. And I think you need to personally, I think you need to take an hour a day just for you. That that's some self-care right there. An hour a day just for, even if I don't do nothing, but just, I ain't going to do nothing for the next hour, but just sit here and shut my eyes and just relax. Because that's what I want to do for the next hour. Or I'm going to go read a book on self-development. I'm going to go for a walk or whatever. But it's about me. That hour is about me. And I know some people go, folks, you got 24 hours in a day. You can take one of those for yourself. I don't care what the world tries to tell you. Now, I know some of you, again, got the kids and, you know, that kind of stuff. You go, well, Ron, that's easy to say, take it out. Figure it out. You, you can do it. Anything you want to do, you'll make a way. Even if you have to start off by saying, I'm going to take four 15-minute breaks for me. That still works out to an hour. I'm going to take four of those a day. But I can tell you what's going to happen. After you start taking those 15s, you're going to churn that 15 into half an hour. So you'll have two of those a day. And eventually you're going to take that hour. Why? Because the way you start to feel and doing this stuff that we're talking about, as you start to make those adjustments, you're going to find that hour. Trust me. We can always find the time. It's just the reprogramming that we have to do because we have to make sure that it becomes important, significant, that it has to be done. And then we'll make it happen. That's the only way things happen is we, it has to become significant on our priority list. And then we'll get it done. And then day seven, kill the comparison habit. You guys know that's that. I mean, that could go way up the list. We're just going to try to follow this, this, this game plan here. That could, that could, that happens immediately. Get out of the comparison business. We keep looking at social media. Remember, people are only showing you the best parts of what's going on, which is good. We don't want to hear all your, your bad stuff. No way. But that's what people are showing. You got people that have never haven't taken vacation in the last 10 to 15 years, but they happen to be showing it right now. And then you're seeing this friend's on vacation, that friend's on vacation, this friend, and you just start, everybody on vacation but me. I ain't got no money. I, they ain't been nowhere in the last 10 to 15 years. But if you see that, again, this is programming. You're programming yourself because you're comparing. Get out of the comparison business. I keep saying in relationships, you guys know I talk about this. You would love your partner if you quit comparing them to other people. Think about that. That's why most relationships have issues. You're too busy taking your partner and comparing them to everyone else. Well, if you would like him or if you would like their, and I'm not just saying as far as actions that people are taking, physical. You look at this woman that walks across and you just go, whoo. And you're comparing her instantly to your wife, who's had your kids, five or six of them. <laughs> Maybe not that many, but you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. But the bottom line, it doesn't matter why. It don't even have to do with kids. But her body's not the same. Your body ain't the same. You ain't going to look the same. We all change. It's artificial outside stuff. Get out of the comparison business. This is why I said what love is. Love is accepting people and things exactly the way they are. This is not about comparing you to anyone else. And if I stop doing that, I can appreciate my partner. And in this case, we're talking about self-love. Because I'm not comparing me to everyone else, it becomes a lot easier to fall in love with myself. So let's do a brief recap of all the stuff we just talked about. First, two things that you need. Uh, the book, for those of you again, it's called The 21-Day uh, Self-Love Challenge by Ingrid Lindbergh. Again, 
The stuff that I just shared ain't in her book. None of the stuff. The, 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 the seven days, yeah, that's in her book because that's what she taught. None of anything else you'll see in her book because this is all me and the things I've learned and I'm sharing with you tips and stuff. Two things again, I told you I want you to make sure you're doing this journey. Number one, I want you to grab your journal. Let's take this down from where we are now so we can see that 21 days. We can see that, that new person and see the results. Um, and then make sure the major two things is one, the journal. Two, is then do the Lisa Nichols exercise where I'm saying three statements that you have to do with the person in the mirror. You got to do this in the mirror. You say the three statements and you add the seven endings. And the first, the first one is, um, I am proud of you and finish that. Ron Myers, I am proud of you. Finish that. The second one, Ron, I am proud of you. I forget. I'm, dude, that was number one. <laughs> the second one is, I forgive you. Ron, I forgive you for seven endings. Ron, I forgive you for. And then the third one is going, Ron, I commit to you that. Ron, I commit to you that. And so those, those two things, I want you to make sure you're doing each day along with the exercise, which is day one. Where are you now? And that's where we're going to do the three questions on a scale of one to ten. Where are we at right now? I mean, on a scale of one to ten, where do we want to be, which we know is going to be a ten. Um, number two, where am I at right now as far as my self-love? Being honest with myself. And then the, the, the third statement is going to be, and how do I get, what do I do over the next day, week, or whatever, to get to a ten? And that's going to be day one exercise. And folks, spend the time. I'm telling you guys, if you do this stuff, it's going to be incredible what you're going to see. But then day two, why is it so difficult to say I love you to yourself? Have that conversation and watch throughout the day the conversation you're having with yourself. And you'll see what's going on and why it's been. And again, as I said, what love is, is accepting you exactly the way you are. Unraveling the misconception, which is day three, which is what I pretty much just talked about. If once we understand what self-love is, which is accepting us as we are, we're going to spend the day watching that, you know, watching the things that we say to ourselves and making those adjustments. Number four, visualizing because we're working on changing our emotions and the emotions, like I said, come from stories. So we're going to have to recognize the stories that we're saying to ourselves. And, and where do we want to change that emotion to? And then visualize that, seeing it occurring. Because again, your brain doesn't know the difference between what's right or wrong, good or bad, real or not. It's not trying to distinguish that. Only thing the brain does is it tries to keep you from experiencing pain. That's it. You know, so, but anyway, so that's number four. Number five, we're going to commit to self-love. So we're going to really focus on that even more. Day six, self-care. Let's go out and do some stuff for ourselves. It's all, it's all about making sure we take care of us. We got to take care of us. Then the need for someone else to do that, it disappears and it makes your relationships awesome because now you go into a relationship wanting to be with people and not looking for them to fill some void. And then number seven, day seven, we're going to totally focus on killing the comparison. We're going to spend that whole day focused on where am I comparing myself? When I catch myself comparing myself to someone from outside or inside or whatever, go, whoo, okay, need to make the adjustments. And folks, journal all this so that you can see the growth. So those are the first seven days. That's what we're going to focus on. We'll get to the next seven days on Monday. Again, next week. So again, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. For those of you that we do talk on Self Love Monday, I'll see you next Monday, and we'll go through day 8 to 14. We'll cover that. And then for those of you that we're in relationships, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Uh, again, uh, I, I just came out with my newest three video series. Those you could actually see, because I have a discount program going on. You can run over to... Um, Ron Simplified Myers dot online. Again, that's Ron Simplified Myers, M Y E R S, for those that, because um, people love to spell Myers M E Y, but it's M Y E R S. Ron Simplified Myers dot online. And on there, I do have just below the videos, you'll see like a little, uh, what do we want to call it? The <laughs> mind went blank there. But anyway, where you need to click to go see the, the great discount that I have. And basically what it does, it allows you to get pretty much all three programs for pretty much what you would pay for one. So anyway, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys. Take care. See you next week. Bye-bye.